That's his real name. Oh, we're at it. Uh, so Sam Lamb and okay, I have been friends for, I don't know, 15 okay. years, something like that. And uh, uh, he has also been helping teach this course for probably 15 years, <laughs> as it turns out. Um, Sam's going to do a talk on designing faces, and it says designing faces with fat filler, but there's a lot more to it than that. And um, one of the differences between surgeons um, that use the same technique and generate two completely different results, actually the main difference is just vision, is aesthetics and vision and um, being able to see what's pretty and what's not pretty, because we can all do a X kind of lift. As a matter of fact, we all get hung up on a deep plane lift versus a high spans lift versus a, just a spans location. I see beautiful spans locations, and a lot of it is just can you, you have in your mind's eye what you're trying to create. And so I think this talk is very important because it's, you know, fat fillers are both very popular, but it's also got a lot of what are we actually trying to do for people. So, Sam, thank you very much for coming again. <laughs> Oh, here, turn oh. it off. You have a lab mic, but you can yeah, use that. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to use both. Oh, is this the... For the... For the... Okay. okay. All right, good morning, guys. Um, I'm going to talk about a lot about philosophy, but also a lot about technique. So you're going to get everything covered in one, and hopefully I'll teach you how to see as well as how to do. No disclosures. Uh, this book, all, the, all, the, all my book, books go to charity, so there's, there's no uh, money from that. Cannulas really have, to me, changed the way that I perform what I do. It allows me to do things much more safely, less bruising, more accurately. And so the top one is what I use for fat, and the bottom one is what I use for fillers. And of course, it gives you vascular protection. So if you begin to look at a face, you know that there is a component of volumetric collapse. There's no doubt about that. But a lot of times if we look at the face monolithically and we think, okay, that must be done with just a volume, you heard a lot yesterday, that gravity is still a vital component to it. Of course, it's not going to be a part of this talk because we're going to be concentrating on volume restoration. Where I've moved and migrated is to away from the central cheek or central face and looked at the perimeter of the face. This outer area, this outer frame, it really changes the way that you see a face because of the way that you see overall a, a shape. And so I'm going to talk a little bit about that in more detail. And then also, to me, the eyes are critical because if there is an absence of a frame, the person doesn't look good. And we communicate on a social professional level by looking at the eyes. And of course, for women, the mouth area is a very, very important area because that area makes them feel older. And it, is, it does. And so that's an important area. So when you take the simplistic perception, what we're trying to do is create a better frame. And that frame element is what you see in this photo when you, when you go across that time, time period of aging. So in a simplistic manner, I, I look at it as a transition point from a circle into an upside down triangle. And this evolution of shape is why we can intuitively in a second look at someone and say that person is of certain age. So at that junction period of about 30, it's more of an oval. And so why talk about this simplistic, th simplistic thing? Is it just treating you guys as colleagues in a way that you don't need, you said, I know all this. This is a way to communicate with patients. It's a tool toward communication. So how I'm communicating to you is how you can address this with patients. So a lot of women in particular don't want to look like what they did in their 20s, which is really, really robust and full. They want to look youthful, but they don't necessarily like the teenage and early 20 years, which is the time that we would associate with maximal youth. Um, so another, another way to look at it is a classic upside down egg. And again, you guys know this, but the way to think about this is to use this tool to address uh, concepts with patients. And that's is a, is a way that I use this all the, all the time. And patients get, oh, I get it, it's very simplified. So that's a way of understanding that framing I talked about, which is that outer element that's there. So uh, this youthful egg shape to older egg shape is why we instantaneously look at someone and get a feeling about their age. So let's break it down even further. So what, to get this egg shape, you want to enhance one, two, and three, and you want to subtract where the X is. And a couple ways, from a non-surgical way to subtract the X, you can do botulinum toxin in the masseteric region or parotid shaping. And from a surgical method, then you're talking, of course, about a, a lift in that area. In three, you can talk about a chin implant, uh, chin augmentation, or you can talk about fillers depending on the degree, what is going on. And I'll talk more about you know, how to make a decision between both of those in a philosophical way. So this next slide is really just a, showing you that f doing it with fat, 
uh, I usually I'm on top of the patient injecting, whereas on the fillers, it's about the same thing. I'm just going lateral. There's, this is, a lot of people get very obsessed with how do you, you know, fill everything. I think most of, of filling is pretty straightforward. It's only in the periorbital region, which requires some degree of sophistication and differences. And I will elucidate that difference as we continue. So talking about the mouth area in terms of framing, the most important for me is that canine fossa. And as, you, as, as you'll see in a little video I have um, where I do an injection for you, that's the area I focus a lot of my attention on, that area, and also just sort of this general depression across the anterior chin. It's this general feeling of aging. I know that doesn't sound very scientific, but what we're doing is we're trying to address an emotional void, which is to make someone look healthier, more youthful, less tired. And that oftentimes can't be 100% quantified. So this frame around the mouth to me is important. It's not as important as the eye area, but it's still an important area. So the other thing that's is a big caveat that I've learned is being very careful of anterior cheek because it becomes a dynamic issue. So I put very little to almost no fat there. And I found that fat in particular has a very high predilection to be preserved in the anterior cheek over other areas of the face. So it's an area that now I put almost nothing in there when I'm doing a fat graft. And with fillers, I also do very, very little. So let's focus back on the eyes. To me, this is the core of the subject today, both in terms of safety and technique, and as well as aesthetic goals, is to make someone look better. So if we break down this area of what the circle is, I like to break it down even further and talk about asymmetric